Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is about to come out soon. So like every year when the new Call of Duty is about to be released, everyone starts to talk about it. It seems this year amongst all the talk about MW3, there seems to be a really big question that I keep hearing. That question is, is MW3 just a DLC for MW2? Well, to put it simply, the answer to that question is no. MW3 is not a DLC for MW2. MW3 will be a completely new game with its own campaign, zombies, and multiplayer. I can understand why people believe it's just a DLC though, because both the games look extremely similar to each other. If you look at a side-by-side -side comparison of MW3 and MW2, they look almost identical. Also, I'm sure many people remember that MW2 is supposed to be a two-year game. That means that MW2 is supposed to be out for a total of two years without another Call of Duty game releasing. Instead, we were just supposed to get a huge DLC this year for MW2 and continue playing that game until the next Call of Duty came out, which would have been in 2024. However, a few months after MW2's launch, Activision decided they didn't want to do a two-year cycle anymore and just go back to the one-year cycle. So that meant MW2 would no longer be a two-year game. Which means that technically MW3 is considered to be a brand new game and not just a DLC. I think that maybe at first it was supposed to be a DLC, but then after hearing the news that MW2 was no longer going to be a two-year game, they changed MW3 to being its very own release. So for the people that genuinely thought MW3 was just a DLC for MW2, now you know the truth to why MW3 is not a DLC, but an actual completely new game. What if you are someone who already knew that MW3 wasn't just a DLC for MW2, and knew that it was an actual new game entirely, however you still feel like MW3 is just a DLC? Well, I can understand why you would believe that. As I said, these games do look almost identical when looking at a side-by-side -side comparison. Not to mention these games are going to be sharing items with each other, as all the MW2 weapons are being brought over to MW3, as well as all your blueprints and camos for those weapons. Also, all your skins, calling cards, emblems, and other cosmetic items will be brought over from MW2 to MW3, so it literally feels like MW3 is just an upgraded version of MW2, which honestly it is. Both games even share the same menu system and even share the same launcher as you have to open the Call of Duty launcher, then choose which game you want to play. Additionally, it also looks like both games have some of the same items in it, like some of the lethals, tacticals, killstreaks, attachments, and more. However, what Call of Duty game doesn't share the same things with each other? Literally every Call of Duty game has had some of the same items, so that part of the argument can at least be justified. Honestly, I think while both MW2 and MW3 look similar, it's really just because they're releasing a direct sequel to MW2 only a year after it was released. Usually after getting one main title within the Call of Duty universe, the next one is usually a different title. What I mean by this is let's say a Modern Warfare game is released one year, usually the next year a Black Ops game will come out next. This way it keeps the games feeling new and fresh as the Black Ops game would most likely be set in a different time frame, have all new weapons for the most part, have new maps, and so on and so forth. That's not the case this time around though, as for the first time in Call of Duty history, a certain title, that being Modern Warfare, is getting a direct sequel right after that title was just released. So that means the time frame is going to be the exact same, which means the weapons are going to be extremely similar, the maps will look extremely similar, the attachments will look extremely similar, etc. Just look at the original MW2 compared to the original MW3. Side by side, they both look extremely similar, however, the original MW3 wasn't a DLC to the original MW2. That's because we had Black Ops 1 in between those games to give the modern era of Call of Duty a break. That way, going into the original MW3, it felt more new and fresh, even though the original MW3 had very similar or even the same weapons as the original MW2, as well as the similar or even the same maps, attachments, killstreaks, etc. But yet you don't hear anyone calling the original MW3 a DLC to the original MW2. That's because again, there was Black Ops 1 in between those games to be able to switch things up. Just imagine if the original MW3 came out directly after the original MW2. People would have most definitely called it just a DLC. So that's simply what's just happening now with the current MW2 and the current MW3. 
Thing as how there's no other game in between them, it just feels like one is a DLC to the other. Like all Call of Duty games, there's similarities, differences, and even things that are the exact same to one another when it comes to both Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. If MW3 was just a DLC to MW2, then that wouldn't be the case. There wouldn't be any sort of major changes made to MW3 compared to MW2, and there definitely wouldn't be any sort of new improvements made. All that would be added is the couple new weapons, maps, cosmetic items, and maybe a few more small things. But the majority of stuff would stay the same, like the movement, the TTK, the minimap, etc. However, that's just not the case as MW3 has made some really huge major changes from MW2. So if you're still not convinced that MW3 is an actual brand new title and not just a DLC, then I'll go over some of the major changes to MW3 that make it stand out as a new game. Firstly, the movement within MW3 is completely different from MW2. It has been sped up drastically from MW2. Everything from the tax printing to the sliding to the mantling and more has been increased to be a lot quicker and more fluid. They even brought back slide cancelling as an option, so now you could use slide cancelling to be able to engage in and disengage out of gunfights, you could use it to get around the map faster, and you could use it to even win a gunfight. The movement is just overall so much better, as you could tell a noticeable difference. It's faster, it's more smooth, and it's more fluid. This allows for people to play a lot faster and more aggressively compared to MW2. Within MW2, the movement was slowed down and you were punished for trying to play too fast or too aggressively. This is because the enemies could hear you coming from a mile away, so they would be prepared for you coming. But with slide cancelling in MW3, combined with a certain perk I'll talk about in a bit, you could easily move fast enough and quiet enough to where the enemy won't even know you're coming and you could get the drop on them. Additionally, the TTK has been increased in MW3 from 100 to 150. This is drastically different from the 100 health you had in MW2, as now with 150 health in MW3, the game feels completely different when getting into gunfights. You're actually able to engage into a gunfight without getting melted in 0.5 seconds, as now you have more of a chance to win the gunfight if you're the more skilled player. This is because having a higher TTK rewards being more accurate and having a better reaction time. If you get into a gunfight with someone and you're able to get on target faster and stay on target longer, then you'll most likely win that gunfight. That is a lot different from the 100 health in MW2, because in that game all that mattered was if you were the first one to shoot your gun, then you'd most likely get the kill because of how fast you died. Luckily that's not the case in MW3, as even if you're the first one to shoot your gun, you could still lose a gunfight if the other person is more accurate than you are. This allows for more opportunities for skillful players to get rewarded for their abilities. Furthermore, they've brought back the old minimap in MW3, where when you shoot your gun without a suppressor on it, you'll then be seen on the minimap as a little red dot. This is a huge difference to the minimap in MW2, because within that game, when you shoot an unsuppressed weapon, you're not seen on the minimap. So it doesn't matter if you ran a suppressor or not, because no matter what, you won't be seen on the minimap at all when firing your gun. This promotes a more slow and cautious kind of gameplay, as people can play within corners and rat spots more without being seen on the minimap. This again is another thing that punishes players for playing too fast or aggressively. That's why it's a huge change to see the old minimap back in MW3, as that means people could play a lot faster and more aggressively without being punished for it. Likewise, there's been a major rework done to the perks in MW3, as the perk system is now categorized as gear, but they still function as traditional perks. Notice as I said traditional perks, and not the MW2 perk system, as they got rid of the whole thing where you earned your perks throughout the round. Instead, within MW3, you actually get not only three, but four perks at the very start of the round with no delay at all to them. That means as soon as you spawn in, you're able to have all of your perks right away without having to wait for them at all. This is honestly a huge change as now players get the benefits of their unique perk selection throughout the entire game. This allows for players to use more powerful perks like for example Ghost or Quick Fix right out of the gate. In other words, perks now feel strong again and they feel like they actually matter. In MW2 they felt almost worthless because you had to wait so long for your good perks that by the time you got them it didn't even matter anymore. Speaking of perks, the fan favorite and beloved Dead Silence is now a perk again instead of just a field upgrade within MW3. 
This is a huge change because it allows you to move around the map without being hurt at all. That way you're not getting sound horde and you can easily sneak up on enemies and be as stealthy and silent as you want to. It also allows you to play more fast and aggressively as now you won't be heard running everywhere you go. Unfortunately that was not the case in MW2 as with dead silence being just a field upgrade that meant when you didn't have it you would have to move a lot more slowly so you wouldn't be heard at all. This led to people playing more scared and cautious until they got their dead silence to be able to actually make a play. But with dead silence being a perk in MW3, that meant if you're using it, you'll always have it so you'll always be able to make a play whenever you want to. Moreover, a few more big changes within MW3 compared to MW2 is within MW3, reload cancelling is back, map voting is back, there's now tax stance, and sprinting will recharge your tax sprint. I think all of these additions and changes greatly improve MW3 and make it so much better than MW2. They are all major changes that not only improve the gameplay, but the quality of life of the game as well, which easily goes to show that MW3 is more than just a DLC, but an actual new game. A DLC wouldn't bring this many improvements and changes to the game, it just simply couldn't be called a DLC at that point. It changes way too much from one game to the other. So I think at this point there really is no way you could call MW3 a DLC to MW2, it just wouldn't make any sense. Don't get me wrong, like I've said I could understand why you or anyone else would feel like MW3 is just a DLC to MW2, but there's just way too much proof to show that it's not, even if it feels that way. Hopefully now you can understand the major differences between MW3 and MW2, so now you can have a better understanding of why MW3 is its own game. Personally, I'm going to play MW3 and give it a fair chance as the changes done are enough for me to make it feel like it's a new game, but that's just me and my opinion on it. In conclusion, with the release of the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, there's one big question on a lot of people's minds. Is MW3 just a DLC to MW2? Well, the simple answer to that question is no. MW3 is not a DLC to MW2. MW3 will be its very own completely new game within the Call of Duty franchise. Now yes, MW2 is supposed to be a 2 year game instead of a 1 year game, so that could confuse people who genuinely think MW3 is just a DLC to MW2. But if you didn't know, Activision decided they didn't want to do the 2 year cycle after MW2's launch and instead wanted to go back to the 1 year cycle. So MW3 literally is a brand new game, not just a DLC, as MW2's big DLC for year 2 got cancelled. Some people know this but still believe that MW3 is just a DLC to MW2, and I can understand why these people would feel this way as MW3 and MW2 look almost identical to each other. If you look at a side by side comparison of the games, they look very similar. I think that's just because it's a modern warfare game releasing after a modern warfare game though, and that is what's causing so many similarities. Usually we would get a different title game like a black ops game in between the modern warfare games so that doesn't happen, but this time around that wasn't the case. Also there's just too many major additions and changes to MW3 to make it just a DLC. From changes to the movement, to the TTK, to even the minimap and more, MW3 has had some major things done to it to be able to be considered a new game instead of just a DLC. Overall MW3 is its very own game regardless of what people think or feel and that's not going to change. So whether you like it or not, MW3 is the new Call of Duty game for the year 2023. It's not a DLC for MW2 and that's been made clear. Even if you want to still say it's just a DLC, you just can't deny the circumstances that make it feel that way and the changes made to MW3 that actually make it stand out to be its very own game. That's it for me though. Do you think MW3 is just a DLC to MW2? If so, then why? Let me know your answer in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. And if you want more content like this, then subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.
shit on.